Welcome back, everybody, to another fantastic episode of the Every Pokemon Episode Ever podcast. Or if you follow us online on Twitter, EPEEP for short. I am Wrestling Chris G. And featuring me with me today, wow, already jumbling my words. This is going to be a fun podcast. Uh, on the other line with me today is my co host. He is the one that's all ghostly and good looking. It's good old Dougie Fresh. Dougie man, how you doing? Y'all laughed at me when I say, <laughs> "Oh, I was I've been working on intros and stuff." Y'all, y'all just think it's so easy. <laughs> I can hear the struggle. Yeah. Yeah. The struggle the struggle was there. Like I I don't know. I like I mean normally I'm I'm a lot more prepared. Like you 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 know this. I know this. But today on this episode I'm not fully all that. I'm not I'm not all here. And there's a, there's a lot that's been going on like outside of us recording and us finally sitting down and getting to the recording and I was in a different room but when I was in that room you had my daughter screaming in the background and just I was like oh my goodness I need a quiet room to do this episode this was fun we were supposed to start at eight o'clock it is now 8 52 yeah the struggle is real I ordered Chinese. I mean, I've I've been ready. I mean, I've I've I'm just throwing it out. I mean, I've been ready. I you know. I've, hey, throw, throw me under the bus now. I'm trying. <laughs> but um, but yeah, um, this was a good episode that we're getting ready to go over. The episode is called "Ghost of Maiden's Peak." This is episode twenty in the Pokemon series, and translated from Japanese, it is called "Ghost Pokemon and the Summer Festival." You know, I actually like the Japanese version more than I do the English version because the Japanese version makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it's not very like creative in terms of like an, a title, but it it gets to the point. Yeah, you know, so, it's like there's a ghost Pokemon, there's a summer festival. It's twenty minutes. What else do you want? Exactly. So, all right. So, in this episode today. Um, this episode started August 12th of 1997 in Japan and premiered here in the U.S. October 2nd of 1998. And as you've been following this podcast, we like to pick a day, um, pick, pick something that happened on this date sometime within the existence of Earth. So, Doug, as always, for some reason, <laughs> Beats me every single fucking time with the damn date. You're going first this week. Look, I was going to go first regardless. I just happen to have time to switch it up and still beat you. Um, oh, I'm, I, I swear you do it on purpose. You kick me when I'm, kick me when I'm down. I don't know. How is it? How is it? If I deliberately went before you, it'd be different. But I was going before you regardless. I just switched. <laughs> In between I, your in between your your room shift, yeah, and you won't tell me this one. So the time is now. We're here. What is your surprise for me on this date of October second? So I was gonna go lazy and do something baseball related because I said you know and and you know spoiler, there's probably gonna be a handful of these. Um, in October, well, possibly, you know, because I mean, we're recording these in October. Obviously, you're hearing these; it's getting towards the end of the year. Um, you know, and but we only got a handful of those left, so you know, who knows, really? Um, but I found this one. Um, while we were kind of jiggering things around, and I, I kind of like it, so I'm going with it. So on October 2nd, 1995, Oasis, the British rock band, released their second studio album, parentheses, what's the story, parentheses, Morning Glory, 
And you say, well, it's a big deal. Dozens of albums get released every day. This is the album that had their smash hit Wonderwall on it. Oh! Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I wish we had rights to <laughs> Yeah, I would, no, I would put they would it in the background. Us. They I would know. come after us. They would hard. They wouldn't give a shit about nothing. They're uh, like, yeah, you're going to pay us this, this, and this. How long, did, how long were they playing our song? Okay, we're going to hit them with this. <laughs> so, obviously, Wonderwall is the, is the one that jumped out. But in doing just the the barest minimum of digging, this um, this album also included the tracks "Champagne Supernova," which not sure, I'm sure not, sure not sure if I know that one. Well, and that's one of those where I'm sure you would know it if I could play it. <laughs> gotcha. I'm can, sure sure you would can, know it. Can Can you sing us a little tune? I'm trying to get the lyrics up. Um, because this, this is podcast. this is one of those because uh, it's you know it's mid nineties right so you're talking like you know you've probably heard it in like fifteen movies and haven't realized it. Oh, I'm sure I I'm sure I did. And Doug is looking it up. I can't spell is the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I graduated uh, elementary. No, I didn't so much graduate. They they gave me one and said get out of here. <laughs> oh champagne i'm trying to i'm just i'm i'm gonna end up hitting the fucking youtube link and we're gonna get killed uh. <laughs> <laughs> so okay well as you look it up don't don't play the song but if you can find it um i'm gonna go ahead and say what mine is and then we, we can circle back to yours if you can maybe sing us a little tune like like a five second tune and so i know what song it is but i'm just trying to find the fucking chorus because i know that's where it comes in and that's where i could get you (laughs) well you mind me going over to mine okay here here's the here's where i'm and i'm not gonna sing it because i'm a horrible and you say doug you did chorus well i know but i fucking shut up Someday you will find me caught beneath the landslide in a champagne supernova in the sky. Someday you will find me caught beneath the landslide in a champagne supernova, a champagne supernova. That's like that's that's what's gonna get you. Like if if you could hit go on a YouTube link, you go, I've heard that song in a million movies and I was that I wasn't paying attention to. Yeah, I'm I'm looking it up right now as we speak so i can kind of play it in my ears while we're doing this and hopefully we're not about to get dinged but if we do i will take it right out and it will be your fault all right so it's called supernova champagne supernova champagne supernova and that's Uh, i couldn't spell champagne that was where i was fucking getting dinged there it is. All right. <clears throat> Let's wish me luck. I'm hitting this right now. Oh, they look like the Beatles. That's racist. They do. I don't know how, but that's racist. Oh, I do know this song. Yeah, see, I told you. I, I, all it would take is it, it's not it, even into the lyrics. You just need the melody. Yeah, in every sad movie ever. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So I just kind of want to put a bow on on uh, the release of the of the album. Um, in its first week, that's seven days now, not a month, a week. It sold three hundred and forty-seven thousand copies. Okay. Well, I mean, that's not terrible. No. And but and people are probably rolling their eyes. This is before you could just download an album on Spotify at midnight. Yeah, you had to physically go out to the store and hope that they had your CD. I, I cannot tell you how many CDs I've gone to Best Buy for when Best Buy actually used to have racks upon racks yeah. of CDs. 
and just go in there searching for a CD and then finding out that Best Buy sold out on it. Yeah. Or they didn't care. So, and uh, uh, just a fun little tidbit about Oasis. The um, the the lead singers, um, Noel and their brother, God damn it. <laughs> brothers Noel and Liam Gallagher, right, hated each other. And probably still do to this day. But they did music together. Just hate each other. Just, I mean, if you're an Oasis fan, don't hold out hope for a reunion tour. <laughs> gotcha. And so they it, did. They did music from '91 to '09. So just imagine that amount of hate for that amount of time. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess when you're making that kind of money, you can you can continue to do what you're doing. That's that's a fair point. Because <clears throat> if me and you hated each other, but we had a twelve million dollar podcast deal, Doug, and I was like, "Well, we got to finish up these last two years," even though I hate your ass, we got to do it. Would you I do don't it? know. I don't know. I still might tell you to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I might come over there and punch you and be like, "You're costing me twelve million dollars." Because think about it. That's two. That's at the current clip we're going. That's spending two hours a week with somebody that I can't stand. And it's even. It would just be over um, audio. But I still. I I can't stand his fucking voice. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we really feel, everybody. <laughs> it's it's all coming out. <laughs> So, all right. So, since yours was back in the 90s, mine, of course, is a little further than that because Doug went first. Just saying. Um, mine happened in 2001. And this is on NBC in 2001, October 2nd, Scrubs premiered on NBC. Great show. One of the most underrated shows, I think, in television history. Yes. And I love the dry humor in the show as well. Because, I mean, yeah, it's, it, it does have its comical features, but I think it's more the dry humor that goes on when they're in, in the hospital that just took the show to where it needed to be. Yeah, I mean, you know, for the longest time, the running joke among, like, t people in TV was like Scrubs. It's the best show you're not watching. So, like, they knew it was good, but it wasn't, like, because you're, like, competing with friends, you know. Or I mean, and, and granted, you know, the later years of friends, but you're still competing with friends on that network. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, this is right in the middle of must-see TV. So, like, you you had to be parked in front of your TV because this is no DVR, right? So Yeah, this like, is pre. This is, well, actually, you know what? I think DVRs might have just been coming out around this time because this th this was the time. Might have been early TiVo. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, like early TiVo or when Comcast finally decided that they wanted to give everyone an extra like 200 channels that you had this big gigantic box inside of your house with a big old remote. <laughs> that you can I, somehow still lose. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about it. Um, it's funny cause I found one in a box, um, about maybe two weeks ago, like an old Comcast remote and I programmed it to work on our DVD player. Oh, nice. <laughs> so good stuff. But yeah, this was when you had to be either smack dab right in front of your TV or know how to work a TiVo, which was brand new and teaching people how to do that. Right off the bat, like I, I had no idea. Like I missed so many episodes of some of my shows that I kind of wish that I knew how to work TiVo and do the bloop, 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 bloop. Yeah. like, oh man, you remember that sound? I and somehow, as DVRs got more advanced, the fast forwarding technology got worse. Yes, TiVo had really good fast forward and rewind. And now it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's fine. You know, like, obviously I'm not like, you know, 
sitting here complaining. But it's like you could zip through something on TiVo, even on four <laughs> times on a on a regular DVR. You're still sitting there going, "Mother fuck." Do you do you remember before people in um, commercials got all butt hurt? Do you remember when TiVo used to um, have that feature where you can skip a commercial? That was the button. That's the button. <laughs> If I could get one button back on my current DVR, it's just skip all commercials. Because if I could just <laughs> get one button and skip three minutes. It was the, the button. best button. <laughs> but someone got all mad that people weren't watching the commercials anymore because they would just zip right through it with the TiVo. Like, that was the best button back in the day. Man, I missed that button. <laughs> so... But um, yeah, Scrubs, um, really good show. I didn't really, I got into it more on syndication. Same here. Like I wasn't, I, but um, I got caught up to it to the point where when they did that final season on ABC that even the stars really don't count. You know, I was watching that live um, and I'll, I'll give them a, a free plug that they'll probably never hear. But uh, if you enjoy what we do with Pokemon, the two stars of Scrubs, Zach Braff and Donald Faison, yes, they have their own rewatch podcast. Oh, do they now? Called Fake Doctors, Real Friends, and they go through an episode of Scrubs. It used to be, it used to be twice weekly, but they have paired back to once a week because I believe Zach has a project that he needs to focus on um they are already into the third season um their episodes are about an hour and a half do you listen to any of these it's it's on my it's on my sub list yeah it's it's one of my (laughs) and now that it's now that it's once a week now it's now it's a real highlight oh gotcha okay so i i have to ask you on a, on a on a personal level, so I refuse to answer personal questions. Ah, shush. So, me knowing you personally, I know you listen to a lot of podcasts. So, how? And I know you listen to all podcasts the way that you think that they should be listened to on two times speed. Yes, the only way. The only way. So, um, how many podcasts can you say that you actually listen to on a weekly basis? And how do you get through your day? Yes, this is a Pokemon podcast, but I, I'm I'm kind of curious right now. How do you get how many do you actually listen to a week? A week? Yes, seven days. Uh, well, I can't get a week, but I can give you can give you the past or how many can you get through in a day if you're really really if you have no video games so you're not doing any ps pouring well no but that's the thing that's what you do oh you play it there oh i gotcha i see Back, it's background stuff man i walk i shower i, I game what There's about when you're a... watching wrestling? I watch wrestling. Wow, you actually put a podcast on during wrestling. That's why I don't do fucking commentators. I can I can mute a match, watch the match, listen to the show. Gotcha. I only I only unmute when somebody's got a mic in their hand. Okay. Sometime lately I haven't even been doing that. <laughs> Randy Orton came out this week and you're like I was yeah, like, I motherfucker, <laughs> it's the same shit. <laughs> same promo week five so all right so let's put a pin on the scrubs it's a great show you guys should watch it if you haven't seen it and we can go ahead and get on into this week's pokemon episode yes um <clears throat> very good episode um very much an isolated episode um but they do kind of, I mean, we're, we're going to get right into it, but they do kind of pick right up from um, last week's episode. Well, no, well, we should say, because I, I, I made a point of this on the pre-record, pardon me, and um, I wanted to get this on the show because I really think this might be the first time it's happened. 
Uh, this is the first time that we started an episode and went to the title screen without seeing the main three. Yes, you told me this off air, and I, I had to think about that. I was like, wow. I was like, you're you're right. Like we we start <clears throat> so let let's go ahead and get on into it. So <clears throat> this week's episode started with the voice of a lady, a young lady, and they're and the camera's panning up to this rock that's in the shape of a girl. So and she's speaking that she will always be there and she will always be waiting for you. And she is, she's here and she's not ever going anywhere. And she has a nice little flower, like a brand new flower in her hair. And from oh, here. Oh, I didn't catch that. That's a, that's a good, I didn't catch that the flower was. Was brand shy. new. Yeah. And. Um, she, she's sitting there saying that she's waiting, she's waiting, and then the camera starts panning away, and then you see coming out of this statue, which is kind of being highlighted by a real girl, turns into Ghastly, and Ghastly just jumps out at you, and you go straight into the title screen. Yeah, like, you don't even have a, a second to, to think, and, you know, putting yourself in the head of a kid that's watching this, like, watching this today... I can point this out because I did it. I went back. Like, oh, you went back? Well, because he does come out of nowhere, right? Yeah. So like, like, oh, that was neat. Let me let me go back and rewatch that. But you couldn't do that on first watch as a kid. You're like, did that fucking ghost just come out of that fucking rock? Yeah, you're like, okay, what was that? Especially. If you're watching Pokemon, say you're not even playing the game. So you're like, what the fuck was that Pokemon? They have ghost Pokemon? Yeah, we're not all Ash who can just pull out a Pokedex willy-nilly and just figure shit out. <laughs> boy, did that Pokedex get a workout today, boy. Oh, yeah. So we start off <clears> this <throat> episode right after that, after the title screen. Straight to the boat where we left our our adventurers last week. So they're they're leaving Porta Vista, and they're on the boat. And Ash and Misty are actually pretty happy being on this boat. And then here comes Gloomy Brock going, "Yeah, I'm not so happy right now." And Ash is kind of like, "Well, why?" He's like, "Because summer is over." And th this was one of my favorite parts of this episode. <laughs> and Ash was like, but we had a summer full of adventure. And Brock is like, Brock just sits here and he's, he's like, yeah, for you, adventure is perfectly fine. But for me, summer is about bikinis and bathing suits and half naked women. And, and we didn't see any of these. And now I got to wait all the way until next year to be able to see this. I was dying. Which is not true. Which is not true. They spent a whole episode at a beach. I know. Did, did, did we just miss what we meant? Like what just happened? Like no, you, remember, you... we're not supposed to acknowledge that. <laughs> Apparently. Um, yeah, yeah, that beach episode never happened. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, Brock was kind of, I mean, this really hit you over the head. It's like, Brock is going through puberty. Um, <laughs> and, and I don't know if this was just me, but I noticed in this scene in particular, Brock's voice was extremely different. It was. And honestly, I mean... I believe all of them were were a little different because I think this is the episode where they kind of started getting into their niche and maybe, um, you know, it, it, let me look up the dates that these aired. So this one, no, it aired a week after. So this was already in the can in Japan. So, huh. I don't know because I, I noticed it on Nash's voice, too. See, I didn't pick it up on it. I just picked it up on Brock in that instance in particular. All right. So for for all of our listeners, kind of tell tell us what you what you heard. 
I don't know. It just sounded like, and I know this didn't, this wasn't the thing because it's a kids' show, right? Yeah. But it almost sounded like they told the guy, they're like, all right, make Brock sound like he's in pain, like being horny hurt. <laughs> like being horny hurt? Yeah. That's the best thing you can come up That's with? That's what I got. <laughs> That's the line of the podcast. That's what I got. Being horny hurts. All right, good stuff. <laughs> I like it. But yeah, he he was so mad. Like he he was so distraught that he was on the ground with a spotlight on him. Just he was shouting. shaking. He was shaking. Like I need bikinis. I need boobs. I need women. <laughs> You know, we've we've said this on a couple different occasions. You know, this is obviously pre-internet. Yes. So, you know, old Brock couldn't exactly hop into a room and just, you know. I'm sure Playboy was still a thing. Well, yeah, but you're talking. A 15-year-old um, getting an adult magazine. Right. Which, you know, people got uncles and shit, so I don't know. Hey, I got my first um, Playboy from my stepdad, actually. He he bought me the Christy Hemi. And your buddy burnt it. Yes. <laughs> but, um, okay. Uh, <laughs> outside of that, um, <clears throat> on a side note, and I know that we're not a Digimon podcast, but um, Digimon... I threatened it, and you didn't like it, so I don't... Uh, sh- shut up. <laughs> um... Digimon just came out with a brand new movie, right? And it's mm-hmm. supposed to be their like big farewell movie. Oh. Yeah. So they brought back all the original characters, but they're adults. Okay. Well, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So they're all adults. And um, I guess once you become an adult, you look you you no lo- you can no longer have your Digimon with you. Oh. So oh. so they're so they were on a timeline. And the more they evolve their Digimon the less time that they have with their Digimon. But it was just funny. And I'm not going to go and give, give out the whole movie because it's not that podcast. But I just thought it was funny because they introduced alcohol, um, sex, drugs, and all that type of stuff in a Digimon movie. Well, like, you, can, you can find that in Pokemon. You just got to go to the right hentai pages. Well, yeah, but <laughs> have, have Pokemon actually have an adult mag like the Agumon, who is the low um, orange dinosaur. Um, he he goes back with his trainer to his um to his room, and Agumon finds porno magazines in his room, and he's like, "Ooh, these these girls are pretty." He's like, "What well, what are what are they doing?" And his trainer just grabs him and goes, you can't look at these. You have to be an adult. These are for me. <laughs> and gets all red and just, it, it was funny. Oh, that's where you were. I was like, how in the hell is he connecting when I just, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, just, just out of, I just wanted to throw that in there. I just watched that movie last night and I was like, oh, this is, this was a good movie. And this happening in this TV show just, brought it back into my memory i was like oh this this just happened in the cartoon i was watching good stuff so you're saying if brock was in the digimon universe he'd be all right oh yeah he'd be able to go in a room and knock one off but i guess he can't do that (laughs) oh man so all right going further in, in this episode so you remember last week how team rocket was in a barrel yeah, they were they were being towed along, yeah, in a barrel, and yes. they said, "Well, we'll get them. We'll get them next time." Yep. Well, they're still in that barrel in this episode, which I liked. I I appreciate the fact that they didn't just ignore the fact that they left the last episode by being drugged in a barrel. Yes. So <clears throat> so they're in the barrel. They're all depressed. They're looking in the water, and. James wants some room service. He's hungry. They're all hungry. But they need to get onto the boat. Um, but 
at this at this point we end up going straight from them to the boat docking so i mean i i don't know about you but like actually re- like watching the show it's fine but reviewing it is it kind of annoying that we jump from one extreme to another like they're being tugged around and then all of a sudden the next scene the <laughs> boat's dying <Careful> now <laughs> shut up <laughs> So, and then the next scene is the boat is docked and there's a big festival going on. Like that, that's two real big extremes. Well, yeah. And I'll, I'll say this until I'm blue in the face. You only have 20 minutes. Less than that if you factor in the freaking theme song every week. Yeah. The pokey rap. Yeah. I was about to say the pokey rap, the theme song, the commercial break. Oh, we didn't even give the who's that Pokemon of this episode. It's gas. Well, I was going to say, that's a layup. <laughs> well, they fooled you on the last couple. <laughs> they didn't fool me last week. They made me think, and I didn't appreciate it. <laughs> You're like, well, wh- why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> so, all right. So, on this episode, um, as, as as we just stated, they're they're now at a festival. There's a big festival going on, and it's at this point that Rock sees a very beautiful woman standing at the edge of a dock. Well, and this is after the this is after he volunteered to re, or ride the Ferris wheel by himself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they they got all off, and Brock was still all depressed, and he's like, "Yeah, I'll just go and ride this Ferris wheel all by myself," and just you guys can just go along and then he sees the most beautiful woman of his life and he got real dumbstruck real quick like it it was to the point where he 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 didn't know this woman but he was willing to do anything for her. but um at this point everybody it's it's like they were the first to get off the boat cuz after um <clears throat> he's looking at this girl there's a herd of people that are getting off of the boat and they just trample Brock. And then we see the girl turn into ghastly, look at the camera and vanish. And Pikachu saw it happen, but doesn't know how to really put two and two together. Well, well, which is weird because we saw very early if Pikachu was determined to do something, he could have played. Yeah, you know, I was going to try to Charade. make it. Pokemon. Well, I was gonna try to make like a Pokemon like charades pun, but I couldn't couldn't quite do it. But yeah, um, <laughs> he could have he could have acted it out if he really gave enough of a shit. I don't I don't think Pikachu really knew what he saw because at this point we haven't seen any ghost Pokemon in Pokemon in the Pokemon series yet, have we? No, no that's a that's a fair point. That's that is a fair point. So Pikachu might not even know what a ghastly is. No, I mean, that, but I kind of figured maybe, um, maybe Pokemon just recognized Pokemon just because, you know, Pokemon, but Pikachu up till what, two months ago was sheltered. Yeah. You know, well, well, not really. So, um, I'm going to jump ahead into the future. I guess there's a short episode when Pikachu is a Pichu. And P- Pikachu actually used to like roam the earth and have a whole bunch of fun and used to get into a lot, a little bit of mischief um, before he turned into a Pikachu. Oh, that was, was, that was, that must have been before one of the movies. Yes. Yeah. Cause I think I know what you're talking about. <clears throat> so, yeah, he, um, Pikachu, as a Pichu, um, used to get into a little bit of mischief. And I still want to see the story of Pikachu getting captured by Professor Oak or whoever captured Pikachu to get Pikachu to come back over to Professor Oak. Yeah, because, you know, throwing away a line of, oh, that Pokemon doesn't seem to like Pokeballs. It passes, it passed at the time, but. Now that we've got time to think and write fan theories on the internet, it doesn't pass anymore. I know. 
Why doesn't Pikachu like Pokeballs? Was Why he do- did Professor Oak literally chase him down? Yeah. And I mean, because Professor Oak did say that Pikachu was very temperamental. And he did he was in that Pokeball with the lightning bolt on it. Yes. So So I just you know, that's at least you know, a, a mini movie or something. Or, I'm sure. I'm sure they they've they've gone over it, and it's in a future episode. And I'm just gonna have to wait and watch it because I'm going one episode at a time. Um, right now, I'm in Pokemon Advanced Battle, so and I think I'm getting to the end of Advanced Battle. If I'm oh. not mistaken. Yeah, I'm, oh. I'm. I'm pretty much. I'm pretty far up there. So, so Brock is distracted and upset because you know he saw the most beautiful woman, and now, now he's gone. Now she's gone, and he hears a voice behind him, and he turns around, thinking, "Well, that must be her." And he's right smack in the face with this old hag, for lack of a better term. Yeah. Well, we 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 did kind of jump 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 a little further. So, uh, remember at this point, um, right after they picked up Brock, um, Team Rocket um, looks up and looks over, uh, <clears throat> basically looks over the dock because the boat's docked. They can get out. They can roam around now. And James sees the girl as well. Ah, and, I see. And he he becomes starstruck over this girl as well. So. This episode revolves around Brock and James being like in love with this this ghostly woman. And I'm going to fight you on James being in love. Oh. Well, we'll 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 get there. We'll get there. So, you you don't think he was in love with her? No. no. Okay. No. no. Uh, but um well, I mean, he he had the heart-shaped eyes on when he saw her. Yeah, but I don't think his love was the same love that Brock had. I think his love was more of an infatu- infatuation. <laughs> he just wanted to because, be there. Because, well, no, I don't even know. I mean, we'll go with it. We'll get into it. But they were, were at two different levels, I think. Okay. James and, James and Brock. Um. So, um, so yeah, James... James Caesar, and then as as Brock is being dragged away, they uh, they ru- they run into another Agatha Nastina like woman. Yeah, because you kind of made the comment, didn't these these three kind of sound similar? And I was like, that was probably just a fact of it's another old slash ugly woman. We don't need to get another voice actor in here. She can just do something different with her voice real quick for a couple of lines. Yeah, but, it, okay, but does she not sound just like Nastina and Agatha? I would have to listen to her dad. I mean, it's been about two and a half, half hours since I watched that episode. Gotcha. Um, and I and I have the memory of a goldfish. Um, <laughs> no, you got a great memory. That's not true at all. Oh, um, but long, long so, story yeah. short, with the woman, she ends up making fun of Misty in the exchange, talking about um, like beautiful women. There, she's talking about the Rock and how um, the per the girl over in the Rock. The story is is that um, her her boyfriend went off to war and she swore that she would stay there until he came back, but he ended up dying in the war, never came back and she never left her spot. So she ended up turning into a stone, um, which is the, the stone that everyone seems to be infatuated with. Males. Um, yeah. Males um, seem to be infatuated with on this cliff. And, um, Misty kind of thinks of herself as this like very pretty woman gets called scrawny by the young, by the old lady and Ash backs her and is like, yeah, she sure is scrawny, isn't she? And Misty just 
bashes Ash in the head and goes, you know, I don't have to take this. Drags him both away. Croc, because dumb's struck, and Ash, because he's theoretically unconscious. Um, <laughs> and then... Um, and then we get a quick scene of Team Rocket literally hunting the floors <clears throat> for money for change because Jesse makes a comment about how uh, at these festivals people tend to be kind of loose ha- with their money, haphazard with their money, yeah, loose with their money. And James tracks down a quarter or a, a penny rather. Um, <laughs> and Officer Jenny ends up see, um, seeing him pick it up and was like, I know exactly what you were going to do. You were going to turn that in. A and whole was, penny. And and uh, she's like, even a penny needs to be accounted for. Um, and she's about to haul Team Rocket off to the station. Jesse makes some excuse. Oh, we wouldn't want to we wouldn't want to get in the way. If we were so they and they bolt. Yes. Um, because they, they right right before Officer Jenny got there, the little old lady that was just with Ash in the gang um, sees them, and she's like, "I can tell you guys are up to no good." But then Officer Jenny comes, and this was Team Rocket's way of getting out of there without getting arrested. Right. <laughs> and then um, we got to the big, the big crowd with with the unveiling of the painting of the painting of the woman of the rock and And we get the full backstory which uh chris just kind of went into yes um and even seeing a painting of this woman is enough to completely transfix james and brock they they were so infatuated because they're like whoa that's the girl that was on the rock and then um, to your point, we have another one of these dramatic smash cuts to the point where they're they're on a pier looking out at the rock, both both sets of um both groups, I should say. And Brock and James are both pledging their undying allegiance to this rock woman. Um you know, James James says, if she was my girlfriend, I would never let her leave my sight. And James is willing to go over the railing to protect her from Team Rocket, which yeah, ends and, up costing both him and Jesse. I know, because Je- Jesse had to hold on to him. And she was holding on to him by his pants. Then she let go. He falls over the rail. And Jesse has to grab him. And then it's just all downhill from there. Literally, because they both... What the fuck is Meowth doing? <laughs> Meowth is just standing there going, well, th- these are the people that I live with. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm a cat, remember? I don't particularly like water. Well, that's a cop-out. Um, And then we have this scene. Um, It's getting dark, and Misty and Ash are, are ready to go into the... Uh, pokemon it's, center where they're gonna bunk down for the night yep and isn't that convenient that ever anyone and everyone can go to the pokemon center just to go and sleep well i mean it kind of makes sense because you know they didn't do hotels for whatever reason so they kind of had to because you know you're a trainer you're going from city to city you know you don't and they didn't do the easy route and say oh there's pokey hotels yeah so it's nice that they kind of wrote that in because other because I mean we did see that we have seen them camping. Yes, yes we have. So at this point, yeah, they're they're ready to go and call it a night, and they they're talking to Brock, and Brock is like, you know what, I'll be there in just a few minutes. Um, just go ahead, head inside, basically find find us a spot to sleep, and I'll be in soon. They go inside and. Misty and Ash are just sitting there, and then all of a sudden, um, the gates start closing around the Pokemon <laughs> Center. How do you and... feel about the Pokemon Center having gates? <laughs> I know. <laughs> and, and the gates start closing around it, and Ash is like, whoa, Brock's not here yet. 
And basically Nurse Joy comes out and goes, there's a curfew. You're a trainer. Don't you know the curfew around here is 11 o'clock? So at 11 o'clock, if you're not in here, you're you, you're stuck out there. So Ash and Misty are now forced to stay inside of this Pokemon Center without Brock. And Brock is locked out. He's done for the night. And, um, you know, that's what we see. Um, of, Nurse, of... Nurse Joy had a yellow logo thing on her hat, by the oh, way. Son of a bitch. That's what I should have been looking at. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Yellow little cross. Um, so, yeah, the, the gates close, and that's all we see of Ash and them. And then we cut up to it up in a tree where Team Rocket is hanging, hanging themselves. In, in, <laughs> hum, now, come on now. We can make all the sexual jokes we want. True, true. Okay. I, I'm sorry for, if that offended anyone. They're, they have a rope tied around their sleeping bags, and they're all hanging in their sleeping bags like, um, what, what, what's the, like a cocoon? Yeah. yeah. There you go. They're I hanging think that's like where they co- got it from, to be honest, because they've, because they've done that. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And I, there's something we did uh, skip over, which is relevant. Um, Team Rocket made a plan to steal the painting of the woman of the rock. Yes. So there's, they're hanging in the sleeping bags and Meowth's alarm clock goes off and he says hey it's time to wake up and steal the painting well Jesse and James aren't moving <laughs> so what does Meowth do well, well Meowth well he tries to wake him up obviously <laughs> there you know he tries to do well, he doesn't do anything because the wind picks up well <laughs> Okay, so it's at this point. Well, you um, you, you forgot um, that the that Ghastly basically walks out of the place where the painting is, and it's in the shape of that girl. And Meowth gets freaked the fuck out. Well, yeah, because he because he's the only one that's awake at the time. Because obviously he's the one with the alarm clock in his power, his uh, his bag. And um, so Meowth sees the lady and passes out, and then. And James wake up and sees the lady. Well, it's it's not that he he passes out. Um, Gasly uses um some type of sleeping attack and puts him back to sleep. Well, it's a form of passing out. Yeah, true. Um, and, and then James sees the lady, and then we do a cut to Brock, and Brock has a conversation with the with woman. The pain. Yeah, and uh, um. And then we do another quick, quick cut to the morning where Team Rock, well, Jesse and Meowth and Pikachu, Misty and Ash are on opposite sides of this. And they kind of do a, a back into each other thing. And it's a, yeah. at that point it's, we get the who's that Pokemon, which is Gasly. Yes. And it's funny because they ask like, oh, it's you. And then as soon as commercial's over, he's like, oh, are you are you guys looking for James? Because we're looking for Brock. <laughs> like, like completely changed. Like, imagine if you were watching this and you didn't have the who's that Pokemon in the middle. Like, this would be a weird scene to kind of cut from because they went from being mad to, oh, are you looking for him? So I don't. And the, on the versions that I watch, I don't get the Who's That Pokemon. Okay. And usually I can't tell. But there was a really hard cut in this particular episode. But I was like, that's where Who's That Pokemon was. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where, where you, if you were watching a different version this time. Uh, no, I mean, it was just, they didn't do a good job of doing a final blend or something, or I just happened to be paying attention this week. I don't know. Um, so yeah, um, Jesse feels obligated to do team rockets intro by herself, which is awkward. It, it was hilarious. She had the flower and everything. And she, she even was like, you know, never mind. this, this is kind of a drag. 
Well, and she well, no, because she gets to the names, and she's no, no, uh, she doesn't even get to. She says a line. Well, she says that she 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 says it's a drag right before she starts doing it, and then she's like, "Well, I got to do it," and then get, goes and gets all into it. And yeah, once she gets to James, she stops and her eyes droop down. And then they all just start looking around for James and Brock. She, well, she doesn't even finish. Because James is doing his part. I think because doesn't he do like to protect the world from devastation or something? Yeah, he, he was inside of the the little hut that they're standing in front of. Yeah. and. So he's being controlled and then tossed out by a ghost Pokemon, which we don't know at this time. He all all Ash and the gang see is James just flying out of the hut. And then right behind him is Brock. And they're they're on the ground and they're giggling and they're they're delirious. And, you know, they're trying to snap him out of it. And. You know, what does that mean? Well, that means Pikachu's got to shock somebody. Yeah, and then we we get good old Agatha's sister's cousin, Agatha's sister's cousin's second mother. She's back. Sister's cousin's second, okay. (laughs) You had to put that together? Yeah, just for my own benefit. Um, (laughs) And then, you know, she gets like the captain obvious moment of the of the episode she says, all men are all men are attracted or how did all men that are witness to her beauty are powerless to resist her charm or something or other yeah basically saying all men are weak when they when they come across the statue because we had a moment where it looked like Brock was going to recover after the shock but that was just a that was just a blip in the system yeah so we're in this old lady's hut and she says well there's one way to to ward off the evil spirit the stickers (laughs) and it's not even just that but this woman was just after money because she she's like we we can do this, but I'm not going to give away these stickers for for free. You're going to have to pay for it. And she opens up a cash register, and then we get a we get a good um, one of my favorite little things. We get the good anime faint from Ash. <laughs> She's like, well, you know, these stickers aren't cheap. And Ash kind of goes, ah, yeah. Um, and then you know. We we do a quick cut of them putting stickers all over the hut, and all and, over Brock and James, and um, J. And this is where I think they're on different levels, because Brock is trying to fight it in some respects, but then when he starts kind of thinking about her, he kind of gets kind of glassy eyed, and James is. A hundred percent against everything that's going on. He's like, I don't want to be possessed. I don't want to go anywhere. I this, but I hope this is gonna work, right? This better work. I want this to when he started. He's crying and shit. And then, yeah, because it's at this point we do a hard cut from the daytime to the nighttime, and the wind starts kicking up, and on the end, and it, the wind blows away all the stickers off of the hut, and. Um, after all the stickers go away, we go to the inside and the doors just blow right open. And there's the ghost of the girl. And everybody can now witness this girl as a ghost. And man, this why watching this like at night as a child, this might actually scare you. Like this they they made this episode pretty dark. Ah, fooey. Oh, come on. Uh, uh, watching this as a seven or eight year old. And and if, if you if you had no light on, you're telling me you wouldn't be a little spooked. No, because I, I told you I'm watching it at seven in the morning. True. True. So. If I'm thinking about anything. I'm thinking about the math test. I don't want to take. <laughs> or or. Um, you're you're that child where the parent recorded the episode and you're watching it at night right before WWE. 
<laughs> no, I I wasn't that kid. Oh, damn. But um, yeah, at this point, yeah, Brock says that he'll basically do anything for this for this girl. And he just levitates. Yeah, he's just gone. He doesn't give a shit. He's still he's still cross-legged. And, and uh, he, Ash and Misty are chasing him out the door. And James is trying to hang on with everything he's got. And he's like, I don't want her anymore. This girl is possessed. He's like, oh, my God, help me. And, and he's like, <laughs> well, I thought you said the stickers were going to work. And James, Jesse's <laughs> like, well, we kind of we kind of got a deal. Um, we got a free set for every set that they bought. And oh, we don't God. think these work when they're freebies. <laughs> oh, and James is like, I can't believe you're gonna let me get taken because you're tight, was. <laughs> but let we it's at this point that we get the funniest thing with Brock. Brock at this point starts just circling in the air, and then when he goes out the door, he's completely upside down. Still cross-legged. Doesn't care. Just doesn't just just as happy as a pig and shit. <laughs> He's just like gleaming from ear to ear. And Ash and Misty are like, is is Brock like for real right now? Like, is, is this for real? Like, has horniness really gotten this bad for Brock? Now, this is where I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of get off of the horniness because i think at this point it's bordering into loneliness oh so you think you just but he has ash and misty how can you be lonely well yeah but i would imagine at this point he probably thinks of them as like his brother and sister True. You know, I mean, not to mention we had the awkwardness with the beach a couple <laughs> couple of episodes ago. M- M- Misty had a good talking with Brock off off screen. <laughs> now, now listen here, I'm as, I'm entitled to wear a bikini if I want to wear a bikini, you, you pervert. <laughs> so, um yeah, at this point James ends up getting blown away as well, just like Brock. And there, Brock is basically going over a railing where Misty and Ash have to then grab him by the legs because basically if he were to go over this railing, he could fall down to his death. And then same with, with James. James was getting ready to go over this railing as well. And then freaking um, James shoots a flamethrower through the ghost. No, not James, Jesse. Jesse th- shoots a flamethrower to the ghost. And James is happy for a minute because he's like, oh, you care. And she's like, well, it's not about you. It's, it's about girls like her, you know, well, thinking they can be all pretty and shit. Now, l- l- let's kind of call Jesse an asshole because at least Misty and Ash grab Brock by the damn legs. They let James just get carried over the damn, uh, like, bridge. And then they shoot the ghost, and the ghost lets go, and James just drops into the water and has to climb up the damn mountain again. Well, yeah, but at the same time, I, I somebody's got a flamethrower. I'm going to let them do their thing. True. But where the he, fuck does she get a damn flamethrower? Well, that's the other thing, but, you know, it's a kid's show. <laughs> um, and then, you know, we get a little bit of the ghost kind of Explaining herself, she's like, you you can't interfere with this. This is true love. And then... Um, Ash takes out the good old Pokedex. Yeah, because the, 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 the image of the woman transforms into, like, the image of, like, five or six ghosts. Yeah, like, she, she transforms into, like, a demon. And then out behind her comes out all these, like, skulls. It's like ghosts but they're just in the shape of like skulls like very scary skulls so ash is is trying his damnedest to what pokemon to, is this and you know we we get the dreaded 404 not found um <laughs> and can, look at misty in in that freeze frame bro like misty is she's scared shitless right now and i'm surprised she didn't just bash ash in the head and was like 
are you fucking trying to uh, really look and find out what Pokemon this is while all of this is going on? Seriously, Ash? <laughs> well, well, I don't really take her being scared for much of anything because she's scared of goddamn Caterpie. That's true. Um, so, yeah, Dexter is still trying to figure stuff out. And eventually, he does kind of catch a reading of Ghastly. And then, you know, it was like, oh, you know, we don't use Ghastly's usually invisible. Um, I'm, what, did I, it, what did it say its strength was? <clears throat> Let's see. It, oh, his specialty is hypnosis. Specialty is hypnosis. So basically, they, yeah, the Pokedex is staring at the girl. Because, of, of, of course, as we found out in the beginning of the episode, Ghastly has taken the form of this girl. And not only is Ghastly taking the form of this girl, um, Ghastly is talking like a human. Yeah, I mean, full on sentences, just all the ex- all the exposition you could want. So I, I, I don't know kind of how, how to take that or if all ghastly should be able to take the form of humans and make them talk. But that, that, that was a little weird in itself, but yeah, um, Ash is looking straight over at, um, the girl and the girl looks like a straight up like demon. Like she is like possessed. And are you kind of mad that Ash doesn't end up getting, we, within the next few episodes, Ash is going to see ghost Pokemon and, we don't Ash does not get a damn ghost Pokemon. I thought he got a hunter. Pardon me. Oh, you're good, man. You're good. Um no he doesn't catch it though. A uh, hunter just follows him. Oh, well then Ash is an idiot in a yeah. couple episodes. <laughs> so but yeah, uh, no, because and I did kind of have that momentary thought because once Ghastly reveals itself, Ash's knee-jerk reaction is, well, Ghastly, it's time for a battle. It's like, oh, good. He remembered he's a Pokemon trainer, and he can <laughs> battle it and catch it. No, he just wanted to get rid of him. It's like, yeah. idiot. Yeah, and not even just that, but Ash, at this point, I mean, we, we end up finding a big twist in this story that there's not only one Ghastly, but then the old lady that was just there, she flies into the air and goes, ha, you figured out our plan, basically, and fucking transforms into, like, a bigger ghastly than what the other one is. And just starts talking full-blown sentences. Gotcha. Like, oh my god. I was like, okay, so there's not only one, there's two. So, I I really want to get into this battle, because it's it's probably... One of the best sequences we've had in the, in the of the twenty episodes <laughs> of this show. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you break down break down this battle because you you kind of made it a little funnier off off air before we we were recording. So go ahead and and give give this nice little play <clears throat> by play of Pikachu Charmander in the game. So Ash's first move obviously is Pikachu, and. Ghastly says, oh, I know how to take care of a little rat. And he turns into a, a fucking mousetrap. You know, a fucking that, mousetrap. <laughs> and that sends Pikachu running. And then we 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 get a quick smash to Meowth. And Meowth says, well, uh, a mousetrap isn't going to stop Meowth. And then he turns into a freaking cat toy. And that distracts Meowth. And... <laughs> And then Ash is like, well, well, no. And then we get Jesse calls out Ekans and Ekans goes, well, a snake's natural predator is a mongoose. And that scares Ekans off. And then (laughs) James is sitting there. He's still catatonic, but Jesse tags him in and James sends out coughing. And then we get a freaking the same mongoose is wearing a a freaking uh, gas mask and we get a Smokey the Bear reference. And then um, Ash throws out Charmander, and the freaking Ghastly turns into a fire extinguisher, and we get the Charmander run, which we've seen 
like I think twice at this point where Charmander's protecting his tail because if you remember, if Charmander's tail goes out, he's dead <laughs> in the middle of all of this. And then Ash tries to get everyone's cheap. trying to kill this fucking Charmander. No wonder when he becomes a damn teenager, he doesn't want to. He says, obey. "Fuck this shit." <laughs> I've almost died like ten times being with this trainer. And then Ash tries to get smart, and he throws out Bulbasaur and Squirtle. Squirtle. And then we get Venusaur and Blastoise, who we were introduced to in the giant Pokemon episode. And they're about just as tall as the damn giant Pokemon in that episode. Right. And then just to fuck with him, he says, well, we'll combine them into Venusoids. And <laughs> fucking. <laughs> freaking. Okay, um, tell, tell everybody what Venus Toys is. <laughs> Venus Toys is a smashed up, literally a smashed up version of Blastoise and Venusaur. So it's got Blastoise's water cannons, but then it's got freaking um, Venusaur's headdress and leaves and shit. And Blastoise fucked a Venusaur, and that's what they came up with. That's what you get. <laughs> It's such an ugly Pokemon, but I want one and so the, bad. And I was going to say, watch that be in Pokemon Go in the next update. Um, so they're petrified. And then Misty goes, well, what do you think of this? And she holds out a cross. And he's like, well, what am I supposed to do with that? And she goes, well, I don't know, but I've also got garlic, a, a stick. stick, and a hammer. And he goes, what am I, a vampire? I was on the floor. I was like, this is this is it. This is the sequence. This is... <laughs> and then the bell starts ringing and that that's when this whole battle starts making a drastic turn because it's about to be morning time and ghastly can't be out during the morning apparently no because he does say hey i might not be a vampire but i don't like the morning and he, he you know he vamooses basically well he fades but, away but okay and this is where I'm going to start depicting this episode because we're at the end of the episode now. But what would, when Ash and the gang docked with their boat, was Ghastly not out in the bright of day and then turned into Ghastly again and vanished? He was. Yeah. He was. So uh, you, 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 you choose now in the heat of battle and you're actually winning this damn battle to fucking disappear and go away man fuck ghastly well no but see at this point he wouldn't have the element of surprise you know he could do it once or twice to catch somebody out the corner of their eye but now they would see it now they would expect it true but he was winning now well, i know but he's a bad guy in a kid's cartoon i know and they only have a minute and a half left <laughs> <laughs> this, this is also true <laughs> So um, at the end of this battle, it's now morning again, and then it immediately turns nighttime again. I hate these cutscenes. Like we literally <laughs> go from morning to nighttime within five seconds. I just watched it five seconds, and they're all on. Um, all the trainers in the town are um, putting lanterns in these little mini boats you know, for for all the spirits and all the people that died in that war. Which is, you know, a nice. Um... Nice little moment, and then you know we get we get a scene at a we get we're at the actual party, and we see that Ash is still kind of kicking the whole ghost Pokemon thing around in his head. He doesn't think that all that happened. No, I think yeah, I think he's kind of trying to come to grips with it or trying to explain it away or something. So, and, you know, Misty comes up and she's all dolled out and she goes, well, it's time to dance. So then we just forget about it. Yeah, well, well, we, we, we went over one big part of this. So as they're putting the boats in the water, the ghastly is now going away. Uh, well, one of the ghastlies are going away and is going to find, I guess, happiness somewhere else. Or he can now go off to wherever Pokemon Heaven is or do whatever he's going to do but then you can tell he he's talking to the statue and out comes the other ghastly and the other ghastly just comes out and says that 
basically it's never going to leave. It's going to stay there. So is this going to be a revolving door? Now, I have a question. What's up? Could this not actually be the ghost of this woman? Well, I mean, she turned into a ghastly. Did she? Yeah, well, at the beginning of the episode. But that's not... Oh, okay, That okay. wasn't her. That was yeah. just... Uh, that was just... That was him being... Tra- trans- transforming into the physical manifestation of this woman. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, out, out of this... Because Gasly's going away, and Gasly starts making some jokes, and then she says that she's never going to leave this spot, and that she'll <clears> always <throat> be here for when her lover returns. So that's the real girl. Right. And then that's when he says, well, I am a ghost Pokemon. Perhaps I can come I can back find one him. day. Or Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Gasly basically says that he'll go out and find Mr. Right, and he'll be back. But um just just a spoiler everybody uh we don't ever get an update to this episode ah, i know ah, i know i quit <laughs> at least not not that i've seen so far i mean i do know in pokemon journeys there that ash is going back to all the spots that he visited in the in the early days so we might end up getting a follow up to this episode at some point but for right now we have not well 20 episodes is a good run I know. So, so yeah, she um, she thanks Gasly for going out to find her to to find her lover, and at this point, Brock is all sad again because um, basically he had fallen in love, but he had fallen in love with a ghost, and James comes out and starts banging a drum, and everyone starts dancing, but. Misty actually looks good. Misty c- came out in a kimono, and and so is Ash. Ash is in a kimono too. I want to know where he got these, but yeah, there it's festival time, just like in the beginning of the episode. So they all start dancing, and that's it. Yeah, and that honestly, that, that... it should have ended with. They should have flipped the last couple scenes around. It should have ended with Gasly talking with the woman of the of the rock yeah like they should have they should have easily have had them dancing and all happy and then just fade away and then you get that happy moment that ghastly's gonna come back one day with her lover and then you it just... started with them it should have ended with them they copped out with the party yeah and then you could have easily have had the fade away up to like a moon or something and then the to be continued right at the bottom but that's just us nitpicking so, yeah, this was a good episode, Doug. It was good. Um, you know, like, like I say, that battle sequence is probably one of the top things we've seen in the his- in the duration of this podcast so far. Um, <laughs> it was just that 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 was just hilarious. It was that, had, that was good. Had some funny one liners. Had a good had a decent story. Um. Yeah, I mean. I mean, it's a one-off episode. I mean, if you missed this episode, you didn't really miss much. But it's it's fun to to see that Ash and them are actually having a little bit of fun, or to see Ash let his hair down for once and just go out and just have fun and help and just be a kid. Yeah, Um, you know, we got a little bit of that obviously at the end with the party that was kind of tacked on. I felt like, but. You know, even then, you know, before Misty came out, you could see, like we were talking about, he was kind of kicking around the whole thing in his head. Yeah. And, you know, we see, obviously, you know, spoilers for a couple episodes from now. This doesn't go away. (laughs) No. So Ash is now acquainted with Ghost Pokemon. So um, come a few episodes from now, when we finally get into the the trilogy that we're going to be covering in just a little um yeah in about two weeks now um we're gonna start covering that episode and those are gonna be a doozy yeah i'm excited to um to talk about those it's gonna be hard to and in fact i might even end up 
just watching them all three on a shot and just having to go back and retouch base. Oh, I think I think you kind of have to. Well, because that's what I did with um, St. Anne's and then the uh, uh, shipwreck and then the subsequent third episode, which wasn't a third episode, but it was a third episode. <laughs> Island of the Giant Pokemon. So, yeah, it's... Um, you're going to have to kind of sit through. I mean, it, it only takes an hour. These episodes are like 18 minutes a piece. So if you have an hour to kill, you can easily sit down and watch those episodes straight through. Well, that's so, what I did tonight. I was like, oh, it's seven o'clock. We're supposed to be on here at eight. Let me knock these out and then I'll find my um, find my facts. Well, then shit got away from me. Yeah, same here. <laughs> so, all right. Well, that was this week's episode. So. This was good, Doug. This was good. This was not not a hundred percent looking forward to next week. Um, bye bye, Butterfree. Kind of. I was I went I went into it thinking it was going to be sad, but it was more frustrating. It was just frustrating and more mushy than I was anticipating or remembered. Yeah. And, and, I, and then they I, copped out at the end with that freaking montage. I was like, oh, look, let's not have original footage. Oh, well, let's not give away the, the whole episode next week. You're, you're going to cost us downloads, Doug. Uh, they'll come back. <laughs> so um, I was asked, um, and, I'm, and I, I, I didn't clear this with you, but um, I'm sure you don't mind. Um, I was asked to um, give a shout out on the podcast for um for let's see what what's the name of the of the website i will get it right now get it right now oh yeah i gotta get it right for um where is it 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 feed spot there you go Feedspot um sent me a nice little email they reviewed our podcast and put us on the top 20 Pokemon episodes, I mean, Pokemon podcasts of 2020, and sent us an email today asking for us to kind of give them a nice little plug. And it's a great it's a great place if you're looking for podcasts. They have thousands and thousands and thousands of different lists. Um, if you can think of a list, it's probably there. Like you can type in maybe top Dragon Ball podcasts or type res- or, or top wrestling podcast and you'll find it there so go ahead and give them a listen it's feed it's feed spot and i just wanted to give them a quick shout out because they asked us and they were nice enough to, to put us on their list doug so we're, we're finally getting some recognition i don't know how i feel about there being that many pokemon podcasts just this year well not no that's not true not just this year because i was looking at a couple of those a couple of those have been going since like 16 yeah but i i had a had a quick scroll on that list and i was like i don't i mean i you know don't get me wrong i appreciate being on it but i didn't think the pokemon podcast pool was that deep i didn't either like i i was 100 percent shocked that that there that there was that many because I'm I, I'm pretty sure when I came over to and presented you with with this I was like I don't think there's that many I was like I listened to one I listened to um and I'll give them a plug because I I like them enough um cheap plug but I I listened to gotta watch them all they kind of do something similar to us but they're not edgy and they don't they don't curse so I mean <laughs> they 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 have to stay PG on their show. Excuse me while I get that uh, M and M line out. <laughs> Will Smith don't got a cuss in his raps to sell records. Well, I do, so fuck him and fuck you too. <laughs> nice. Oh man, leave it to you, Doug. But um, that's just, that's first thing that popped in my head when you said they're not, they don't curse and they're not edgy. <laughs> well, they're not edgy. They are entertaining. They're entertaining as fuck. And um, but yeah, we. Oh um, well, no, they're over there getting jiggy with it. I get it. Yeah, <laughs> they're the Will Smith of the they're of the, the Pokemon pod. We're 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 the M and M. So, um, but yeah, I I just want to give Feedspot a nice little shout out. Um, they're I guess I guess you can kind of say they're one of our sponsors now that because they 
they advertise us. So um, we're out there and um, I haven't been asked by the other ones, so I'm not going to give them a plug, but we're actually on a few lists now. So we are on a total of three lists um, when you search us on Google now and we're kind of everywhere. You can find us on Reddit, Twitter, which go ahead and find us on Pokey Breakdown on Twitter. Um, trying to get all of our plugs in, but make sure you use our hashtag EPEEP. So, yeah, um, this this is pretty good. Reach out to got to watch them all. Say, hey, you got a free plug. Reciprocate. Yeah, yeah reciprocate. Just they, they said that, that you're a good podcast. We heard about you through them. They called you Will Smith. We don't know how you feel about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe don't tell them that part. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah. Um, I think we're pretty much done because next week is Bye Bye Butterfree and I don't even have to look up a translation because it's the same in Japanese as it is in English. Oh, that's convenient. Yeah, the exact same title. So, do you have anything else to add this week, Doug? No, I gotta go clean out my closet. (laughs) Getting all those Eminem lines out. (laughs) Alright, we'll say goodbye, Doug. Goodbye, Doug. And this is Wrestling Chris G telling all of you, don't miss next week's Bye Bye Butterfree episode because it's the last one before the trilogy. Have a good night, everybody.